let's talk a little bit about the bill. Um, you know, you've got a couple. I've got three of them up here. You know, it, it, it's a big bill. But we do big bills. Uh, and you're not for or against a bill just because it's this thick or whether it's uh, a thin piece of bill. The current status of the bill, uh, you know, the one that's getting the most coverage right now is, is H.R. 3200. Um, H.R. 3200 still exists by number, uh, but other than that, it doesn't exist anymore. All right? You'll see it in another reincarnation uh, in that it has now gone through the Education and Labor Committee that I serve on. It was amended in the Education and Labor Committee. It was reported to the Rules Committee. The Commerce Committee has passed this bill out of their, com their committee. They've referred it to the Rules Committee. And the Tax Writing Committee, called the Ways and Means Committee, they've passed the bill, made amendments to it, and referred it to the Rules Committee. So there are, no there are now three bills that have been amended that are sitting at the Rules Committee. Sometime in the next, whenever Speaker Pelosi uh, and the Rules Committee determines that it is appropriate for this bill to come to the floor, uh, if they believe that it is appropriate to come to the floor, the Rules Committee will have the responsibility of taking the three different bills and putting them together into a single bill. The Rules Committee will have a tremendous amount of latitude as to what that bill will look like. It will not be restricted to taking language from the, the three bills that have come from the three committees and cutting and pasting and putting it together. They can dramatically change the bill and move it to the floor of the House. The questions that I will have and that you should have is when the Rules Committee reports out a bill, obviously you want to be concerned about what the content is you want to be concerned about how much time we have to review the content, to figure out exactly what's happened in the bill. And, the third, and then the third thing you'll want to consider is exactly what amendments will be or will not be allowed for a vote on the floor. So that's the process in the House. The Senate has not moved as far. They really don't even have a bill uh, that you can say this is the Senate bill that is being considered. There's a lot of different negotiations going on uh, in the Senate. There's a gang of six, uh, three Republicans, three Democrats that are voting or working on a bill. Uh, there's the Finance Committee that's working on a bill. There's probably a leadership uh, group that's working on a bill. Uh, you know, and so the, the Senate, somewhere along the line, will work its will and perhaps pass a bill out. If the Senate passes a bill out, and the House passes a bill out, it goes to a conference committee. Again, a conference committee is not limited by what comes out of the Senate and what comes out of the House. Again, they have a tremendous amount of latitude uh, to craft a bill uh, and what the parameters may be. So what I'm telling you, in short, is there is a long way to go uh, in this process. Um, and what we are going to be talking about tonight, I think in many ways, is now history. 3200 as introduced, because it's already changed. Okay? It's already changed. It's changed in, as it went through the three committees. And so this, you really do have an opportunity to, uh, to influence this process. And I'm assuming that's why at least some of you are here. The, uh, the second thing is, as I take a look at 3200, uh, I've got strong feelings on the bill. I voted against it uh, in committee. There's a, there's a lot of ambiguity in the bill. And some people will tell me, well, Pete, there's a lot of ambiguity in every bill that comes out of Congress when it's that big. It's kind of like, yep, that's right doesn't necessarily mean it's good or bad. Uh, in regards to health care, I've got lots of concerns uh, on an issue this important where there's this degree of ambiguity. And what, is, you know, what, kind of, what kind of questions would I like to be able to answer that I can't right now? Not because I don't know, but because the bill's not specific on it. You know, the bill creates a, a health exchange. 
The health exchange will be a, a process whereby the government will review the various different private sector insurance plans that may be offered to the marketplace. But the criteria for what those plans are or need to be to be approved have not yet been established. So if someone tells you, you know, yes, your plan will be available, I don't know. Okay? I just don't know. It could be a, a plan that, you know, you look at it, I, I have a federal health insurance plan. I'm assuming that it would meet the criteria that would be established by the health commissioner, but I'm not sure whether it would or would not. I picked the health savings account. Uh, the indications are right now that that plan, that type of plan may not be available uh, for sale in the marketplace uh, under the parameters established by the health commissioner. People will say it does, um, you know, it, it's going to be revenue neutral. I don't know. The president has said he will not sign a bill that has a negative impact on the deficit. All I know is that, right now, come on, come on. All I know is that we've had this bill scored uh, by the Congressional Budget Office and uh, some other groups, and the scoring, you know, the, the estimated cost of this bill uh, is somewhere between a trillion dollars and a trillion six for the first ten years of the bill. Now remember, the first, of the first five years of the ten years, the bill doesn't go into effect because the bill doesn't go into effect until five years after we pass it. So really that cost estimate is for years six, seven, eight, nine, and ten of the bill. And then we, you know, they, we don't go on estimating beyond that. So I can't tell you really what the cost of the bill will be. The third thing is, and a lot of people have asked me this question, is you know, exactly what services and services will not be provided, will, will be mandated coverage as a part of a basic plan. You can't, I can't tell you because it doesn't outline that in the bill. Question is, does it or does it not cover Ill, uh, illegal aliens? You can't, you know, in the bill it says it won't, but what it doesn't, the bill doesn't do is it doesn't mandate that the health commissioner put in place a process that says before someone can purchase a plan that you actually have to go through and verify that the person selling the plan actually has to verify that that person is in the country legally. And for those of us that are in the legislative process, we know that if you say A, but you don't say B, you open up a tremendous loophole that may or may not be closed as the rules and regulations are written. Okay? So I just urge you that when, if people are talking about great specificity as to what's in this bill and what is not, I, I would just question uh, that because as I've gone through the bill and as my staff has gone through the bill and as others have looked in the bill, we find great, I have great discomfort about the, the wide latitude that the bureaucracy will have in putting this plan together. Uh, when we were going through it in committee and I was reading the bill, you know, and I came back and the next day I told my we, we we went all the way through the night, okay? Some of you don't believe we do our best work during the day when we're wide awake. Uh, you can only imagine what we were doing at three or four o'clock in the morning, uh, but we went all the way and we we got done at 6 o'clock in the morning. Um, but, you know, as I was going through the bill and reading it in committee, one of the things that struck me, and I asked my staff to go back the next day, and I said, every time it says the, com the commissioner shall, the commissioner will, or the commissioner must, would you identify how many times that is in there? Uh, and they went through and we identified 187 times. Okay? 
that is a tremendous amount of power, okay, for establishing benefit packages, reimbursement rates, and, and all of these types of things. And so that's where, again, I get a little bit nervous. The, the interesting thing is, is, and this is where the town hall meetings really got, you, you kind of get a sense of where the people are, and this is what I got Saturday, and I've done some other ones, uh, not formal town hall meetings sponsored by my office, uh, but where groups have invited me to talk at. What people, what I sense is that a lot of people are saying is, is slow down. The second thing that they're saying is we need reform. I think there's unanimity that the reform needs to be happen, happening. I'm a marketing guy. I'm not an engineer. But I had a process engineer in Cadillac. He said, Pete, why don't you guys do what we do in business or what we as engineers do in business? I'm not sure marketing folks do, but as engineers do. And he said, you know, take a look at the process and break it down into pieces. And if you've got a problem, if you think that cost is a problem and you think that medical malpractice is a problem, then do a bill on tort reform. Okay? And this, and this, do, do a bill on tort reform and we can debate the pluses and the minuses of the various parts of tort reform, but then we can have a bill on tort reform. If we think that there's a problem with uh, insurance companies abusing the system, insurance companies uh, putting in place pre-existing conditions and all of that and, and limiting access, then let's do a bill on mandatory coverage uh, so that people have pre-existing conditions uh, and we have an opportunity to deal with that problem. Because if we've got out of the people that are uninsured, if there's a good number of them have pre-existing conditions, that's not right then let's put in a fix for pre-existing conditions. And then if we've, got, if we've got a piece that deals with, um, you know, we've got, we've got a lot more entrepreneurs today. You know, the, the old model of, you know, for, you know people going to work at, at Herman Miller or Steelcase or GM and, you know, being there for 30 or 40 years doesn't work anymore. We've got a lot of people out there who, you know, they're working on their own and, one day they're a contract engineer at a steel case. The next day they're maybe doing some contract engineering for somebody else, but they're working out of their home. If they were working for steel case, you know, steel case would be providing them with health care with before tax dollars. If this person working on their own is buying health care, they're buying it with after tax dollars. That makes no sense. Then let's do a piece that, that addresses the unfairness in the tax code. And so one of the things that that I'm sensing is what, what you would like, or I don't know about you, but the people that were in the town hall meetings before were saying, <clears throat> break it into smaller pieces, it becomes more consumable, we can understand what you're doing, vote on it, and then kind of go through this in a logical process. And let's see where we are, let's do as many of these as what we can get agreement on, see where we are in two or three years, and then come back and the problems that we haven't fixed adequately enough, we go back and we take another chunk, or the conditions have changed again. You know, it's, we're not going to come up with a system today or this year that's going to work forever because conditions change. You know, we may have medical breakthroughs, we may have all kinds of exciting things happen in the medical field that, that will just change the parameters of healthcare, and we're going to have to go back and adjust it. So let's recognize that this is a dynamic system and let's address the specific problems that we have identified today Let's move forward, let's fix those, and then let's, you know, continue monitoring and improving the system that we have today. Uh, and that's an approach that, uh, that I'm more comfortable with, uh, but, uh, you know, we'll see once uh, where we end up.